Field Speak is a program on Universal Heritage Television Niger, where all matters concerning the youths are discussed and analyzed by the youths, especially in a society where the field abandoned and not fairly represented, yet so much is expected from them. Join us every Friday as we present to you Youth Speak on our YouTube channel at Universal Heritage Television Niger. Youth Speak, a voice for the youth. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. This is Youth Speak on Universal Heritage Television Niger. I'm your host, Iwuna Munachi, and on this episode today, we'll be talking about the influence of social media on the mental health of the youths. With me to throw more light on this topic is Emmanuel Osinachi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I have this beautiful lady, Goodness Mesoma. Goodness Mesoma is the Assistant Secretary General. School of Languages, Alvan Ikoku College of Education, Oweri. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. You need Thank to tell you. me the secret to your beauty regiment. You're kind of glowing. She's brightening up my screen. You're welcome. It's the grace again. of God. The grace of God, indeed. <laughs> okay, um, let's get to the business of the day. Technology keeps evolving. One of the biggest breaks in technology development is the creation of a virtual global village something we all call social media. From the perspective of parents, some parents, teens and educators, social media has helped the youth develop communication skills, um, it has helped them make friends, pursue areas of interest, share thoughts and ideas. However, as it is with every other technology, there is always a bad side to every good thing. So today we'll be talking about the influence of social media on the mental health of the youth. Mental health is one of the indices of health and it always it, it concerns our emotional health, our emotional well-being, our psychological well-being and our social well-being. To put it simply, it is all about how we think, how we feel and how we act. So I want to come to you goodness i want to ask you a question and this question is the other thing social media has influenced our mental health the mental health of the youth okay thank you very much for having me in this program okay. like you said earlier the social media is a tool a very powerful tool for communication in which uh, more especially the youth see use as a means of expression and as a means of exchange of thoughts and ideas mostly well it has its bad side bad effects actually which uh, um, affects the mental health of the the youths more especially and this comes with uh, the issue of depression yeah, it causes depression it causes anxiety and it causes more especially low self-esteem among the youths they will feel like they are they they are not among they will feel like uh, they are not up to this level they'll feel like you know having a lot of thoughts that um, this is not actually their place or they are not uh, up to this class you know yeah, just, yes a kind of competition they feel like they are not among like they feel like they are not their appearance is not satisfactory to them okay. something like that okay. so it really causes so low self-esteem it causes anxiety, it causes depression. Okay. You see, more especially teenagers who spend up to four or five hours mostly chatting on social media without even considering their mental ill health, something like that. So it causes depression and makes them to have less sleep, more especially in the night. Yeah, thank okay. you very uh, much. Um, Emmanuel, do you share a different opinion from what you said? Well, firstly, I don't actually uh, share the same opinion, but firstly, I want to thank God Almighty for giving man the knowledge mm -hmm. to uh, create social media, because social media is actually a good platform for us to share our thought experiences. Some people also make money from social media, which That's I true. do too. So, um, like she said, social media have actually, uh, actually uh, caused more harm than good in the in our era today that some of our youth 
don't actually read their books. Social media distract them from reading their books, mm -hmm. uh, uh, distract them from uh, even taking their normal sleep. And we actually know that when you do not actually take your normal five to six hours sleep, it actually um, give you a, a stress in your brain, and it doesn't it doesn't make it actually make man to actually go down. So social media have actually caused a lot of harm to our generation. So we are actually advising the youth that they should stop the way they use social media before it can actually cause more damage in our society. Okay, uh, let me ask you, um, based on statistics, uh, findings have it that kids as young as 10 use social media. So I want to ask you, Emmanuel, do you think there should be an age limit, a kind of age restriction on the use of social media? And no, there should not be an age restriction of social media because so many children actually learn a lot from social media. Okay. Like example, coding, uh, robotics, or the rest of them, which can actually lead them to them having an interest to become the engineer of tomorrow. So if a, a, a child can actually learn coding through social media, that means the child can actually become somebody. So what, what I should tell, what I want to tell our youth or the parents of today is that they should monitor their kicks on the use of social media. There should not be any age limit of um, usage of social media because a child can actually learn a lot using social media. So when you limit your child of uh, um, being attached with social media, there are some things which he or she might actually gain from social media. But because of he or she is not there, that means uh, you're actually limiting that child from growing. So okay. social media is actually, in as much as it does actually have a bad or negative uh, part, it's an actually a good channel of, uh, of uh, social or learning. Okay. Um. Goodness, you have something different to say? Um, I don't think I have something different. He's right, by the way. But um, the way that so many parents treat their children today, like you said, monitoring them. Mm -hmm. So many parents really cross boundaries in that, forgetting that um, their children should have privacies as well. Well, I'm not saying that they shouldn't monitor them, but they should at least try to give them rooms try to give them rooms to some aspects. Mm -hmm. And um, the issue of uh, monitoring them is also right, like knowing the, f the type of friends that they keep on social media, mm -hmm. knowing them, making sure that those friends are not like a bad influence to their children and um, corrupting their mindset about some particular yes, things as well. Based on what you said, there was a story I read um, uh, la was it last week or two weeks ago about um, a man who has been chatting a 13 year old girl on um, was it one of the social media platforms and he was asking to meet with her and when he was finally arrested they saw all forms of um, stuff on him CDs, condoms and the rest of it so That's you can so imagine bad. a 13 year old girl keeping such a friend on social media anyways, the third question I want to ask Emmanuel is, you can agree with me that there are acts virtual acts of violence like cyberbullying on social media uh, they call it internet trolling if i'm correct internet trolling and um you see acts of uh, acts of uh, moral decadence such as pornography what can be done to put an end to this virtual acts of violence and moral decadence well um like i said before uh, in as much as social media is good, it's actually have a, actually a negative impact. And um, the the ways you can actually do to put away of this uh, cyber bullying or the rest of them is that first, firstly, because it actually sometimes cyber bullying, which involves um, uh, an individual threatening a fellow individual yeah. or the rest of them, mm -hmm. firstly, you actually, actually need to know how you modify your social environment. When you modify your social environment, most times you don't attract such harm you don't attract and such such a uh, kind of threat and sometimes you also know the kinds of friends you have or you keep on social media mm. because uh, when you keep good people you see good things and when you keep bad people you continue to see bad people around you so you should also not know how you behave in public because sometimes people might actually capture people might actually capture you and when when you are doing selling something in public and you see them posting it on social media trying to threat you or trying to um, bully you on social media so you have to behave yourself whenever you are in public so you know you have to dress or even look decent in whatever you are doing in as much as you also have your own bad ways of lifestyle but whenever you are in public, be conscious of your environment. 
that's what I had to say about this. Okay, um, you were saying, goodness, that um, parents should monitor the activities of their kids on social media. What about parents that seem too busy to do these things? So parents that seem so busy to monitor the activities of their kids, to know what they're doing on social media. Like there was a story that was trending, was it two years ago or last year, about a young girl that sends her nudes to random men on social media and all that. We got to know from the information we read on social media that the mother gave her that phone when she was barely nine. And all she knew was go to YouTube. When she was being asked, how did you learn to send your nudes to men? She said she saw it on YouTube, she saw it on um, Facebook and other social media platforms. So I want to ask, what methods should parents employ in ensuring that the activities of their wards or children are monitored on social media in such a way that it doesn't affect their mental health? Because there are some kids that when you take away their phones, they begin to uh, either begin to throw tantrums or they'll slip into depression. They'll tell you, oh, I'm depressed, my mom did this, my mom did that, my dad did this, my dad did that. So what other methods can they employ in ensuring that the mental health of their words are protected? Yeah, thank you very much for that question because these days so many parents now prefer their work over their children, over their family. So many parents. Now, it's not good. It's not a good advice because so many of these kids, while left alone, they really go into so many uh, abstract uh, things and behaviors and all that. So they should make out time. Even if they don't make out time, those those phones shouldn't be with them all the time. They should uh, find a particular time, take away those phones, buy them novels to read, educative novels, give them books to read, give them programs to watch, you know, things like that. Make them, educate them, even if they don't have time for them, they should bring guidance for them who can monitor them closely, even when they're not around or even when they're busy with their work or something like that. Yeah. Okay, thank so you everything that has a, a bad side has a good side. I know, not like I know on personal grounds, but I think I have seen and I've read up um, about surveys that had to do with young people who used to be depressed but claim to have been healed of depression by joining communities on social media or watching comical skits on social media. Do you think that if these kids or youth can be healed from depression by joining social media, um, should it be a plus on the use of social media? Yes, it should be a plus to the use of social media, but um, most of these comical kids, they don't educate the students at okay. all. They don't educate the youth, they don't educate the children. So they need programs that educate them, programs that add to their knowledge. Okay. Yeah, things okay, like that. Uh, do you think, uh, let me ask Emmanuel, um, do you think if, um, since they are now kind of dependent on social media to be healed from depression, if the same social media or access to social media is denied, do you think they will plunge back to depression? Uh, sometimes they might actually plunge back to depression. Uh, sometimes they will not because before the existence of social media we have actually been living comfortably um, nowadays uh, people don't know how to have uh, mentors spiritual directors mm -hmm. and spiritual fathers assuming those things are still existing and when you have a, an issue when you have a problem you run to your mentor as a mentee, you run to your mentor, uh, mentor, I'm having this issue or not. So the mentor, your mentor will actually mentor you and give you a right direction or right channel to follow to actually swallow up your depression or whatever, you, any negative impact you are having. Or you, you, if you're actually a Christian, you go to your spiritual director or spiritual father or spiritual daddy, which he or she will <laughs> actually also a spiritual mommy. Is the daddy <laughs> <for> <laughs> <me>? <laughs> which he or she will actually direct you to the right path to follow. So, so I actually encourage people to continue this right of having a mentor is actually yes. good or a spiritual someone yeah. who is actually more than you to actually give you mm -hmm. guidelines in as much as um these uh, commercial skits also yeah. help us sometimes but sometimes uh, i do go online oh. to watch about all these uh, comedy skits <laughs> uh, the likes of uh, funny bros yeah sabinus and uh, all the rest of them sometimes uh, they actually keep me joy those guys are actually mm -hmm. doing wonderful, wonderful work yeah. And wonderful work mm -hmm. so that's it so we, we should encourage ourselves to go back to fall back to the line instead of 
you mm. being depressed mm. in the society. Now that, you mentioned, now that you mentioned mentor, I, I think I remember, it takes me back to a story that I read some time ago. I'm only talking about stories. I read a lot of stories. You don't have to blame me. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> about a 15-year-old girl who committed suicide hmm. because she felt that she was not living up to the expectation that her so-called role model the, the, the kind of expectation she felt like as role model she, is kind of great and the kind of image the the role model was given to her she was not living up to that she was not living up to that expectation now she committed suicide because of this do you think that most of those celebrities are creating a mirage to these young people making them uh, uh, feel like or set unrealistic goals that when they when it is not achieved they either get plunged into depression or suicide do you think this uh, uh, celebrities are doing way too much. You see them um, come to their social media handles and talk about um, the body perfect, the perfect body, or the perfect life, or, or, or lifestyles that you know for a young person can't really achieve if they don't have anything doing. Do you think by creating this mirage, this youth end up getting plunged into depression or having suicide ideas? Yes, they end up having suicide ideas. That's why um, these celebrities, they should reduce the type of things that they flaunt on social media. Because, mm -hmm. yes, because by the time those youths or those uh, teenagers start mm -hmm. watching them, flaunting themselves and all that, they will start feeling like they don't feel belong. Just like I said earlier, mm -hmm. they don't feel belong. They don't feel like um, the type of life that their parents are giving them. They, that they, don't, they don't really appreciate that kind of they life. Want more. Yeah, they want more. Just like we hear of uh, Yahoo these days, mm -hmm. those boys would like to, you know, put their hands into places that uh, they are not even their type, you know, making uh, themselves to be classed, you know, to be classed, like um, making, you know, entering into so many crimes, so many cyber crimes, mm -hmm. you know, getting money from all these things and uh, okay. trying to feel. I, mean, I want to say something. Some of these celebrities, they live fake life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they live fake life. In as much as, <laughs> in as much as uh, they are, they actually get money for doing what they do online. Some of them live fake life. Some of them not even have such amount of money they, they post and uh, they claim yeah. to have in account so yes. they actually do it to actually oppress people so my advice to the youth ourselves that we should stop we should stop uh, uh, taking ourselves or uh, equal or kind of um, trying to have the same measurements the same way with the celebrities because uh, even god that created man has a reason for a purpose for your creation and what Mr. A might actually has, might not actually the same thing you might actually has. You are also created with a special uh, qualities. So your own your own call or your own quality might actually differ from the one of the celebrity which you watch. So we should also limit how we believe these, uh, these celebrities, but some of them live fake life. Okay. Um, some weeks ago, I watched the clip. It was a very it was a very heart, uh, 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 heartbreaking clip, honestly. I saw the video of a young man, probably in his 20s, with a baby, about eight months or nine months. And this young man was feeding this baby Indian hemp. I don't really want to be specific. I don't know whether it's Indian hemp, but I know it's kind of a hard it's drug a hard somehow. Drug, yeah. So this baby was taking this um, substance. And surprisingly, this baby was not uh, coughing or showing acts that maybe I'm um, this kind of a substance is strange to me. You don't know how long he has been doing this, but the thing is, he had so he had someone recording him, and after recording that act, he posted it on social media. Yes, they were mixed reactions, some condemning him, while others were laughing to the act. This is social media we're talking about. This young man must have seen or might have seen this uh, act being exhibited on social media to have had the balls, the effrontery, to recreate this kind of act to a baby, I mean a nine month baby. Now, I want to ask, with this kind of act and uh, exhibition, where do we see ourselves in the next five years? Thank you very much. And um, that's part of what I said earlier, that um, th those things should be reduced in the aspect of kids and teenagers watching them so that um, they don't get involved in such menace, in such moral menace. So they don't get involved. 
because um, I've had a kind of classmate before and mm -hmm. he has confessed to me that um, he has done this type of act before and unluckily for him his parents caught him in the act okay. where he watched um, a kind of clip of a guy smoking and he tried doing it and his parents caught him in the act and um, they treated him like you know they flogged him <laughs> mercilessly <laughs> okay. so since then he has uh, stopped it but i don't know if so many of these youths now still watch all those things online please they should uh, stop watching those clips and the uh, short short videos mm -hmm. okay so so that they they don't get their their moral knowledge oh. corrupted Emmanuel, what's your opinion on this well some of these exhibitions comes from peer group mm -hmm. your peer pressure so sometimes they don't even watch it on social media because uh, their friend is actually smoking they want to mm -hmm. test it they want to sometimes they want to belong to the society so that's why they end up uh, doing what they're not supposed to do so what i'm what i want to tell the society today is that we need to go back to the drawing board we need to go back to the drawing board because in the next five or ten years uh, our generation might actually is going to be an mess we need to go back to the mm -hmm. drawing board whereby we need to know the kinds of things you you introduce to your, your children, children. Yes. so you should always monitor your children yeah. in fact Millennial if yes. you are not ready to have a child <laughs> if you are not ready i'm saying this but if you are not ready to have a child uh, don't even mm. invent on it leave it if you are not ready to take care of your child yes. don't go into it marriage is not only the procreation of uh, children there are a lot of things, a lot of beautiful things behind marriage. Imagine seems so good in marriage. Don't worry. You, you, you would give me more things about marriage than you look like a marriage counselor. A lot of beautiful <laughs> things behind marriage. So it's not about procreation of children. So if you're not ready to take care of your child, don't go into it. Just okay. speaking as if he's married. Don't go into it. <laughs> okay, everything that has advantage has its advantage. advantage. You can agree with me. Yes. But do you think the consequences of using social media outweighs the benefits like like the consequence of using social media yeah. like, like you said before everything that has advantage has also advantage. also has advantage yeah. social media is a beautiful thing that happens to man mm. I will okay. not lie. It's a beautiful thing that happens to man. No Whereby, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's one of the beautiful things that happens to man. Whereby you can actually connect to a friend mm -hmm. who happens to be in London. You can connect to mm -hmm. a friend who happens to be outside state. Sometimes mm -hmm. it might actually be um, a lost friend. Mm -hmm. But because of uh, the existence of Facebook, you can now maybe search and search somebody's name. You can yeah. able to get back to your old friend. Sometimes people actually get help from social media. I've actually had a story whereby uh, mm -hmm. people married and they met themselves on social media and they end up getting yes, married. Yeah. So social media yeah. is good, but just that we are actually using it, we are actually abusing it. We are using it in a wrong way and we are abusing it, which is not good. Nowadays, people don't no longer go to library because to read, to read because with your Android phone, you can just search and, and just get what you want <laughs> and you think of a finger. Yes. So. Like I said before, we need to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. If you are using social media, it is good. Very, very, it's a good um, content. It's a good uh, a channel of communication. But know how you make use of social media. You might call mm -hmm. me old school, but I still read novels. <laughs> I like meeting my friends physically. So social media, it's uh, just an advantage to meeting friends that I love. But to me, call me old school, but I love physical meeting. That means you don't do video calls. <laughs> I have a question for you. How about in the issue of impersonation? How are you sure that the person, the picture that you're seeing on the social media is the real person that you're chatting with? How are you sure? You do, okay. you because do, these you days we have we see cases of impersonation. Uh, in such we cases, see cases of you impersonation. can actually collect the person's number and call the person. Mm -hmm. And once you have the person's number, you can actually record the voice. You can even do uh, video call, like I said, yesterday I did a video call with a friend who happens to be in Abuja, yep. and by so doing that, you can yeah. see that you look like your friend, it's not like oh, somebody is actually virtually met on social media. <laughs> <laughs> okay, goodness, let me ask you with this um, development now, we can agree that true, true, truly the influence of social media on, our, on the mental health of our youth is no, doesn't really seem so well. What do you suggest as the way forward? The way forward is, um, like you said, going back to the drawing mm -hmm. board, like presenting what you're meant 
to give your children directly tell them what is right and what is wrong even in the this can you know be corrected with the use of a dialogue like parents should come meet their children tell them what the social media is all about mm -hmm. give them the preventive measures of uh, avoiding those evil parts of the social media mm -hmm. okay present to them tell them the benefits as well you know present to them like you know telling them the the benefits that they they should use it for educative things instead and not for the bad side and the negative side okay Emmanuel what's your what's your take on this my take is, is that I encourage the society to continue to give us a good content on social media. Mm, <laughs> a good content on social media. Like when I was still growing up, I actually watched this uh, relationship heart-to-heart uh, um, -heart on yeah. RS TV. Okay. Where if you have a problem on your marriage, mm. you can actually... Is it talking about marriage? <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm trying to introduce an educative... Uh, content on social media. So I'm telling the site to, to continue mm. to give us good content on social media, but most times it helps us. Although sometimes um, good content doesn't pay more, or uh, it doesn't actually pay easily. It actually mm. needs to, it only needs time to, to need time to develop it before you start paying. But we need more mm. content. We need more of program seminars. Educative to be seminars. And educative yes. seminars in our society. Both the government, the society should bring more scale acquisition programs yes. to help the youth of today. Okay. That's my take. So if you have a problem with your marriage, you go to your man of God, go to your pastor, <laughs> go to your spiritual mentor, and not to the social media. <laughs> okay, um, goodness, what, what are your last words to our viewers? My last words is please mind the way they use social media mm -hmm. okay you should discipline yourself on the aspect of the use of social media even if it's 30 minutes daily mm -hmm. or one hour daily because most students i mean youths spend more time on social media more than they spend on their books and their educative stuff so they should discipline themselves more on the use of social media more Emmanuel, what are your okay. last words to our viewers well, I want to tell our viewers out there and my fellow youth uh, in the society, we should encourage ourselves to, uh, to bring good content to the social media because social media has actually come to stay. It's not going anywhere. So what we need to do is we need to modify it in a way that it will be more educative and more creative to yes. the society. Okay. Instead of uh, saying that we need to er eradicate the social media, it can never be eradicated. It has come to stay. Okay. So we need to, it needed to be modified. And I also want to encourage uh, friends and way wishers, try and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your children, with your friend, like try to have a, a give them psychosocial support. Try to know what they are passing through. Because most times friends, <coughs> friends have been are facing a lot of depression. So sometimes uh, when you talk to some of the people in the society, you see that they are actually facing a lot of things. So try to give them a word of advice. A word of advice can actually change someone's story. So I encourage the society to learn how to care for each other okay. so that people may not actually take their life because of what they see on social media and what they are facing in life. So try and try as much as possible to give your child one-on-one -on -one conversation. Try to know what your child is actually doing on social media. Try to monitor your children on social media. In fact, be their friend on social media. Mm -hmm. Let them know that, let them know that, that you are part or you are one of their friends on social media, both Facebook and WhatsApp. Okay. Even if it's one, once in a while, try to bring their phone to not actually to actually know if they have blocked you or not. But well, sometimes <laughs> they actually they might actually block you from not viewing what they are posting. So let them know. And feel free to talk to your children, make them your friend. Mm -hmm. Because when when your when your child is actually afraid of you that much, there's something yes. they might actually be hiding from you. Yes. So make them your friend in as much as they are still your little ones make them your friends so mm -hmm. that they can able to open up to, to you whatever they are facing in the situation that that that, that, that type of story we heard he said that a, a 13 year old girl went to visit mm -hmm. and so assuming he has a parent that is actually close you have a parent that is your friend before embarking on such journey maybe you can actually discuss this to your mother or to your father mm -hmm. depending on the kind of friend you are to your children so just be close to your children and be close to each other mostly care for everyone okay Wonderful. on this note we would watch round 
the discussion for today. We've been talking about the influence of social media on the mental health of the youths. From all we've been saying, parents are supposed to monitor the activities of their children on social media and be there from, for them, not just monitoring. Be their friends, speak to them, because a lot of youths get depressed and they feel like their only solution or the only way out is to go to social media and whatever they see there whatever they learn at that particular time it is what they're going to believe i want to say a very big thank you to my guest emmanuel onoha and comrade goodness mesoma and to you thank my you esteemed much. viewers for sticking around with us until we come again this is youth speak or universal heritage television Ninja, I still remain your host, Ibuna Munachi, saying thank you and bye bye for now. Youth Speak is a program on Universal Heritage Television Ninja, where all matters concerning the youths are discussed and analyzed by the youths, especially in a society where they feel abandoned and not fairly represented, yet so much is expected from them. Join us every Friday as we present to you Youth Speak on our YouTube channel at Universal Heritage Television Ninja. Youth Speak, a voice for the youth.